Okay, let's talk about lures and bass and best lures for bass fishing. It's not gonna be this video, <laughs> but as I'm getting plenty of questions, if you are interested in me covering my very best bass lures and different conditions and everything, just uh, drop me a comment section down there here and uh, I'll do that. What this video will be about is my best bass from last year. What did I catch them on? Why did I pick the lures I did? And why did, I, did they work in a given circumstances? And that's probably the very best recommendation for you if you are wondering, and I'm getting loads of these questions, um, as in, I'm a beginner, I haven't got my first bass, how do I go about it? So hopefully this video will help you out getting your head around a little bit about the subject. So tune in, give it a like, and let's jump right in. So according to the weather stats, we had the coldest April in 30, 40, 50 years, whatever was the, the figure, and we had the wettest May in for as long as they keep the stats for. Uh, so that means the bass fishing hasn't kicked quite yet. I was just talking to a friend, he said the bass are still offshore, they are in the deeper water, they are getting there while targeting pollocks and mackerels and other uh, species. That means they're not quite inshore yet. But what it also means is that as soon as the conditions are right, which should be just literally any day now, we have a beautiful weather spell now, which should be any day. So as soon as the weather conditions uh, are right, the bass fishing should kick in properly. I had only one session so far this year, and uh, so let's just have a look at how did that go. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's a fish. And that's the very first bass of 20, 21. Welcome, you little beauty. Absolutely made up with this uh, first bass of uh, 2021. First time fishing for them this year. And uh, on a very sunny day, no wind, the conditions aren't the easiest, but I've managed to get this uh, little, little beauty. <laughs> that's it, off you go. So hopefully that's a sign of things to come this season. It was a lovely session, I've managed to get a couple of bass, it was my only session this year, but I'll definitely be trying to find those bigger fish when I know they are around. So for now, let me show you the biggest bass from last year and let me tell you what lures did I get them on, why did I pick those lures, how did I match them to the conditions and hopefully that will help you catch a couple of uh, bass this year too. So we'll kick it off with my first proper bass when I thought last year there were actually two very nice fish caught that, se that session and a couple of others. <laughs> but it was when I thought, it was after the first lockdown, when I thought it was all over, happy days, back to normal, nothing could be further from the truth. We are still just after a third lockdown, hopefully we won't have the fourth one now. But let's just put the COVID aside and jump right into a fishing. So let's have a look at this fish. Okay. So good to be fishing after the COVID again and getting a lovely bass like that. I can't believe it. Next cast just after releasing that fish. And look at that. <laughs> this is amazing. This is amazing. After all this COVID situation, this taste is so much better. Blessed to have caught that fish. Wow. We let her go now. Okay, you beauty. Okay, you beauty. Off she went. Off she went. What an amazing fish. Well, nothing wrong with catching 
uh, such a beauty but it was a fun session it was a session when i've gone through lowers and lowers i was in a good spot i knew there should be a fish around but i wasn't getting anything so i've gone through all my standard lowers going through a big and kind of a soft plastics mainly soft plastics what i use but also some hard plastics wasn't getting anything but i did feel there were a, a fish about so what i did do is i've put this uh, westin solve peel and 12 gram and i had it mounted with um, my ever faithful tether fly rig and if you'd like to know I, I keep talking about this tether fly rig because it's really really good so if you want to know more have a look at my channel or there will be a link somewhere here but also i will be putting a video so know how to tie it exactly just to show you and as soon as i've put this little guy on I had two small fish and then maybe one or two casts later I had the 67 centimeters beauty and then the, the very next cast after releasing that fish another 67 so what's the chance but that's what this little guy did with this teaser fly and they were absolutely hammering this lure as, as it was going over the hiding or ambushing spot and what's very good about this people might think it's mainly for a sit trout fishing but what's absolutely brilliant about this it has a very small profile and it is a small lure it's a 12 gram version i'm talking about here it's a 12 gram version and um, it has a very small profile and sometimes bass are tuned into a certain type of food and they will not hit your big lures and they will not hear your big plastic and the big hard lures but if you put something small doesn't need to be this guy but if you put something small very often those big fish will just turn on all of a sudden so have a small lure in your uh, box, in your repertoire. I opt for this Westin Solve Pill in 12 gram because it cast miles. You can work it very slowly. It has a small profile and it is an absolutely excellent lure for both sea trout and bass. So, okay, what happened next? So the next one, oh, the next one was the big one. The next one was the big one. So let me show you the fish firstly. What the fish. Mind blowing. Monster. What a beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. Amazing bass. Just a couple of ounces short of 10 pounds. Brilliant, brilliant fish. And off she goes. Off she goes. 9, 14, she went. <laughs> my second biggest bass uh, today, my biggest one was 9, 15. This one was 9, 14. They just don't want to go the, the 10. I, I'd like them to, but I'm sure they will sooner or later. Now, how did I catch this fish? Let me just change the lure to the one I caught it on. That's it. And you will see that most of the lures I will be showing you are soft plastic lures. Okay, ready with the lure that I caught it on. Um, but firstly, let me tell you that a big fish, big bass, they don't come by just like that. You know, how to try to target the bigger fish specifically, I explained very well in that video here that will be just on the screen and in the description as well. So click there to get you an idea how to target the bigger fish. Um, but uh, it was a really good session. So I was going to a spot I like to fish uh, because it, can, it tend to hold a, a few bigger fish but I was always passing by a number of uh, not as much likely spots on the way there and that day I decided to fish them very well and the water is only about uh, two feet that's max 50 centimeters that's all so uh, and, and there are patches of uh, sand among some uh, rocky reefs but never be put off by uh, shallow water but are known to hunt in a water that only covers their back. So even a foot or a two foot uh, deep water will have the bass. Now you do need to be very quiet and very careful fishing those marks. And as I said in that video, don't run to the water and start fishing, just fish the water edge. And that's exactly what I was doing. So uh, I was fishing a shallow water, I was fishing a reef, and I was fishing very, very close to a structure and a, and a rock and a gullies and the fish was literally just inches away from a big rock, just hiding from a strong sun. That's what they do a lot in the sunny conditions. They go very close to the rocks uh, where they have an, a, a cover, a, a shade, and an excellent, excellent ambush spot. So make sure you fish those spots. And what I did do is I've put this um, Evo Sticks lure from Red Gill. 
in this color, which is a green gobi. I'm not sure if they're making it anymore or not, but I, I know they make the other colors. And I had it on an offset seven gram um, jig head. That lures will not cast mice, but I actually don't need my lures most of the time to be, to be casted mice. Um, but I need them, th this lure to be worked in a fairly shallow, in the rocky ground, when there was not too much of the water and not getting snacked and to fish it effectively. So this lure will go in about 30 centimeters of water, maybe 50 if I keep my rod tip high and I can fish it slowly, I can fish it around the structures and around the rocks. And that's exactly what I was doing. And this fish just shot out of, of the ambush spot and just slammed it, just absolutely smashed my lure. And it was excellent, excellent fight. So the next one on the list will be a session that was really excellent. I've caught quite a few nice fish and two very big ones. So let's have a look at that and I'll talk to you in a second. How did I catch them and what did they take? How's that guys? For another amazing fish. Smashing. Another beautiful bass in a tough water condition. Very, very strong fish. 67 centimeters, I say about seven pounds. Beauty. Well, let, her, let her go now. It was an excellent, excellent session and I was trying to prove my point about fishing uh, close in, fishing the edges, fishing the rocky structures. And my own advice worked very well for me on that occasion. So it might as well for you. I've caught quite a few fish that session with the two best going into high 60s, low 70s. I can't really remember exactly the, the, the size at the moment, but they were absolutely beautiful fish in about maybe six to seven uh, pounds each. And um, so there were two of them. And the first one hammered, again, red gilt, but this time it's the evolution. And that's the color I have here, uh, blue and white. Again, I, I'm not, you probably know, I'm not a huge believer in colors. That's just the color I have here. Now, these lures are working very similarly to the other ones. A lovely sandy action with the tail. Lovely sandy action. Uh, it's a weight lure already, so it has a weight and it has an exposed hook. It's a mustard hook. These hooks are unbelievably strong. They will never fail you. Uh, you will never straighten them if you're in the snack, so you will be losing those lures. But why did I put that lure on? Okay, so the other one, and um, I fish in a very snuggy in the shallower water and also with that color being more subtle, I tend to use it in a, a, a clear water in a very bright conditions. Whereas this lure I will be using in what I, what I call my perfect bass conditions, which is when there's about a meter visibility in the water, there's a tinge of cloudiness, tinge of color, but it's not dirty and it's not very clear either. So in those conditions, I love to hunt for big bass and I love to use this lure. Now to use this lure, I need a little bit uh, deeper water because with these exposed hooks, it will go and snag you. Uh, and also with the weight there, it goes a little bit deeper. So I'd like to have at least three feet or a meter of the water before I put this guy on. And I will be trying to fish it exactly the same as the other guy. So it's the same tactic, close in, close to the structure, and uh, just fish around the ambush spots but this guy will get me a bit deeper in the water column, hopefully to those uh, feeding fish. And look at that, another beast of a bass. Beast of a bass, again, taking two, three rod lengths out. I meant to show you the last fish and it became a, my best session so far this year. Amazing. And that was the second fish of that session. And this day, the water conditions were just, just, just so-so, which is the way I love them. But uh, on the first spot where I caught the other fish, there were cleaner conditions. The water was, um, there was more visibility in the water. And that's where I was using um, the, the small profile sandy lure. Whereas uh, later on, I got to a, to a spot that got, that got fairly cloudy. It was probably over the visibility I'd like it to be. So what I've opted for is a bigger lure uh, with more action. Um, and the reason for that is that 
fish predominantly a, f a fish with the uh, lateral line, w they detect prey in the lateral line and the more clear the conditions, the more they rely on the lateral line and, and also they, they, they smell and not uh, uh, on their side. So the cloudier the conditions, don't necessarily put a pink lure on or a yellow lure on, put a lure on that will make more vibration in the water and it will be uh, easily detectable by the fish in the water that makes loads of water movement pushing water aside and that you can work it slowly to give the fish the time to detect it and, and find it in that murkier water and for that I put on this uh, again red gill it's not a sponsored uh, video and um, it can be any lure that's of a similar action I'm not saying go and buy those lures I'm saying buy lures like that okay I tend to use them, they work for me, that's why I'm talking about them. So, red gill vibro shot. And the reason I'm talking about, uh, or I was using this vibro shot is, firstly, unlike the other lure, it has much bigger tail. So it's a swim bite as opposed to a sandal type of lure. It makes more vibration. It goes side to side, like a typical swim bite would. So that's another movement in the water. And it also has this, uh, ribbed, rigged, ribbed, ridged, whatever you call it, a body that again adds to a water movement. It's again weighted lure. It will go a little bit deeper again than the other lure. So I would want to have at least, at least three, four feet of the water to be using this one. But with a rod tip high, you can work it fairly shallow. And that other bass absolutely slammed that in the water conditions that weren't perfect. Moving on, what happened next? Let me look at the lures I have prepared here. Okay, so the next was a surface action. Let's have a look at this while I'm putting the other lure on. But I had to sneak out early in the morning and look at this. Some lovely, lovely bass on the surface lures. Number seven, guys. Number nine. Number 14. On a Lucky Craft Sammy, shout out to Cormac Walsh. Thank you, mate. The lure is doing wonders today. Okay, you know I said the best bass from 2020, and those bass hardly uh, can go as a as a best biggest bass, but they were definitely a best, as in one of the most memorable from last year. And the reason for that is that surface fishing is absolutely amazing. It's smashing. If you want to get into a bass fishing, if you want to experience something that's absolutely mind blowing, just go surface fishing for bass. They don't need to be big, although I did lose a very, very big fish on, on the surface lure. I will show you in a second on that day. But they don't need to be big. Uh, but if there's plenty of them around, and believe me, there was plenty of them that day, I wasn't counting. Ooh, 100, 200 hits, somewhere in between, or attacks on the lures. But the way it goes with a surface fishing, maybe only one in every three or four will hit the lure, of which only one in, in, in three will actually get hooked, but it's an absolutely amazing fishing. On some retrieves you might get as much as three, four or five hits from a different fish on the same lure until one of them actually smashes it and, and, and gets hooked. So uh, whenever you can find some uh, surface feeding bass, just fish for them with a surface lure. And you can use any surface lure uh, you want. There are pachinko, there are uh, Sammy's, there's spitting wires, so just pick whatever works for you. Now I'm sticking with this guy, I'm trying to limit the number of lures I use, so I've sold my other ones. I'm sticking with this guy, it's a Sammy, Lucky Craft Sammy, 100 size. This one is in a ghost IU um, mirror scale pattern. There's absolutely hundreds of patterns of, of, of this lure, so pick whatever you want. Whenever you're picking, what I like is, uh, I like this uh, whitish belly. Uh, the, the fish will mainly see the bottom of the lure and I like it to be a kind of a bright color, tinge of a green, tinge of a blue, white, silver, anything. That's what I like. And um, again, pick anything you want. Some guys are, 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 are uh, doing very, very well on the black lures. As I said, the color is not the most important, but what is good about this guy is it flies absolutely miles and miles. It is very buoyant, not like some other surface lures. It's very buoyant, so it's very easy to work. And I like to work it up, but I also love it to work it to the side. And it has an amazing action, whatever way you work it, it's very easy to work it. 
to Lucky Craft Sami in hundreds. And the last, <laughs> but not least, if you're not expecting this lure, um, it will be a surprise, but let's have a look at this tongue of a fish firstly. Wow! <laughs> With a tiny, tiny lure, with a tiny hook. Big chunky bass. Such a great fish. Wow. AliExpress special. Don't ask me the name. I have absolutely no idea. It costed me maybe 60 cents, 65 into 69 cents at the push. I wasn't really fishing for bass that session. Um, but that goes to show you that in a lure fishing or fly fishing, it's not about the, as much the color of the lure or shape of the lure, um, but it's more the combination of everything into imitate what fish expect to see. They don't expect to see a lure, they expect to see a certain thing in the water, certain bait, certain food that they're used to. So if your lure, the way you work it, will look similar enough to what they expect to see, they will hit it. And that big bass absolutely smashed this lure. I was fighting it in, for some good 15 minutes. So the point is, don't get preoccupied with the lures that much. Certainly not with the colors. Just have a different variations that will cover you for a different situations where you can change completely the presentation. You can go fast, you can go slow, you can go deep, you can go shallow, you can go near the structures, you can go more in the open waters. For that, you don't need the Japanese lures costing you 30 quid a pop in all the colors that they produce. You need different variations to cover top of the water, shallow, 30 centimeters, the next range kind of a two to three feet. You need one lure that will go deeper than three, four feet to go to those fish and, and those spots that, that, that are deeper. And then you might need just a smaller lure, a metal lure that will cast mice. That really is all you need. It's not a rocket science. And when you're asking about the lures, um, it's not really about the lures, it's about putting your time in and working and finding the right spots, not the right spots, finding the right conditions and be there when the fish are. Bass are not occupying the same spots all the time. They're moving in and out all the time. So you just need to put the time in. You need to have a selection of lures that will allow you to fish different water columns, different sizes and present uh, uh, different options to the fish. And that's it really. And after that, if you put enough time, you will absolutely smash some beautiful bass. So I hope you found value in this video. If you did, you might consider sticking around by subscribing and giving it a like. And as I said there at the beginning, if you'd like me to cover the best lures that I carry with me and why do I carry them with me, just drop the comment back and, and one of the next videos will be about how to tie that teaser fly rig. Best of luck, tight lines lads and ladies. <laughs>